I'm back. I'm gonna make a groundbreaking video this Friday. I didn't think my uh, sex game video, Coke for men and his Pepsi for women video, I didn't think it was gonna be that interesting. I checked the feedback. It's like 35 views. So a lot of people are still watching that video. So this is gonna be another one of these videos. Gonna make sure it's not too long. It's not too, you know, not too long, not too short. You know, try not to take up too much time. I'm gonna walk around because as you can see, I'm at the Grove Park. I like to switch up the location from the park down my street because there'd be a lot of traffic to the Grove. So I'm here where I like to film. Here I like to film here because I like the fresh grass. I like the environment. Um, there's a lot of variety. You know, we got a soccer field. We got a baseball field. Far down to the left, we got a basketball court. You know, a recreation park. You know, so uh, and people like to walk their dog here, and there's places to film at. So I like stuff that has choices. Where where I live at in the hood, you know, you get you a park, and there's some trees, and you have a basketball court, and you have a baseball field, but uh, you know, it ain't the same compared to here. So let's get to the video. It's gonna be called um, "Sex Game." Um, your heroes are not always that. Now, I did say I was gonna make a video about why it's not always good to follow in the footsteps of your heroes, because often at times when you inspire to become your heroes, they will, for the most part, disappoint you. In sports, entertainment, music, even in the business world. There might be somebody that you consider your idol. And then you find out they're not they're not exactly who you thought there was. Like I'm going to use one of my favorite anime characters as a prime example. On why I said it's not always good to follow in the footsteps of your heroes. You look at the voice actor who plays Goku, right? Now, because of all the animated movies and the miniseries of Dragon Ball Z, um, Dragon Ball Super, and I know a lot of anime fans don't like when you bring up Dragon Ball GT, but he was credited doing some type of voice work on Dragon Ball GT. You know, he, he, he knew about the project, and he got some credit for it. They had another voice actor, but my point is, he's known for playing the voice of Goku in Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, which is a continuation, and then the animated movies that are canon and non-canon. And he's been a voice actor for the last 16, 17 years. He's been a voice actor who makes pretty good money you know he's making anywhere from probably 10 to like maybe fifteen thousand dollars maybe twenty thousand dollars as a nice bonus and if it's a feature anime film then maybe maybe twenty five to thirty thousand dollars of course the government got to take half of that so the rrs you know you got to pay taxes you know you got to take a chunk out of that so things of that nature now, people go to the comic cons, they go to the anime conventions, and what they find out is, I have no idea how true this is. Now, I've seen some videos on YouTube, but you can't always go by what somebody tells you on YouTube. They, for the most part, from what I see, he's a very nice person. What I get is that there are days where he does not want to always be approached with a pen and paper or a poster or a book or a magazine with Goku on the front cover and people say, hey, yo, what's up, Goku? Can you get my autograph? I mean, how would that make you feel if you were an actor and for like 16 or 17 years of you being a voice actor um, that does television and film and anime and he's even done some voiceover and video games of Goku that every time he steps up outside his house seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year he's always approached hey yo Goku can I get an autograph and then he has that look on his face like dude I'm smoking I'm drinking or I'm talking to my girlfriend or I'm hanging out with friends from high school and college from 20 years ago maybe some other time and some people might take that as disrespect and being rude now in one aspect it is and in another aspect it's 
I have my own personal time to myself. Now, when he goes to the Comic Cons and he takes pictures and he tells people, I'll take a picture, but not that picture. Or I'll take a picture, but it, it has to be the following. Now, that's when you can kind of argue that, yeah, that is kind of borderline disrespectful. And he has his reasons for it. And I remember I read an article, like, maybe 10 years ago, I read an article that they said that he was mad at fans because when he first voiced Goku in the beginning, a lot of people accidentally mistaken him for the original voice actor who played Goku. Like, they had another guy before him, but that guy was mad because he wasn't making a lot of money. Like, he was making some two or $3,000 playing Goku and Dragon Ball Z, the miniseries, the animated series, an English dub before Funimation took it over from um, Ocean Dub, because Ocean Dub had it originally, and then Funimation um, brought them out, and then when they brought them out, they wanted to change voice actors. And he had a British accent, and people made fun of his British accent. So he had to go to acting dialogue classes to learn how to speak American to do Goku. So that was one challenge. And then when people found out what he looked like, they made fun of his appearance. That was the second thing that he got upset about. And then they got upset because he didn't know the history of the character. And he knew about the history of the character because he had done other animated movies or shows where people would talk to him about the character. So he found out about the character when he got picked. Um, it wasn't until Goku turned into a Super Saiyan that people finally realized it's a different voice actor playing Goku. And I look at it from two different perspectives. When, it's, when you're out in public and your job is to take pictures and sign autographs, yeah, you got to show some type of respect to the fans and not be mean and upset with them. But when the guy is with friends and family, when the guy is with... His girlfriend, that's the time as a fan, you got to show some respect. See, I'm a loss prevention security guard once upon a time. I used to work at the Grove for one year and six months. And I used to see a lot of big time celebrities that I see in the movies and television shows. And they had a rule. You can't walk up and ask for their autograph and their picture because a lot of these guys be taking it personal if you walk up and ask for an autograph. So I would never, you know... You know, I would never be a problem to them. But I've seen other people do it. He's just one person. Now, the second one would probably be more recent. Like, I heard some people say some stuff about professional athletes and professional sports. You know, I always hear some people say that when they saw Kobe Bryant back in his heyday playing basketball, that he was, he was arrogant, that he was hard to, to, to talk to as a basketball fan. Well, when you win three championships, three in a row, and you're the great Kobe Bryant who wants to chase uh, Michael Jordan's shadow, you'd be surprised. Uh, they have an old saying, you try to imitate your hero, you become your hero. Now, I'm not saying Kobe Bryant's like the way people say he is, but again, a lot of times fans don't want to tell you that these guys be hanging out with friends, family, um, that they went to high school and college with from 20 years ago, or they're out with their wife or girlfriend, and they walk up and say, dude, I gotta have your autograph. I remember in the late 90s, early 2000s, people called Eminem an a-hole because every time Eminem went to a McDonald's or a Burger King or a KFC, um, they walked up on Eminem, and Eminem couldn't even make his order because they always wanted to take a picture. He had to like, sign like at least 50 autographs in two hours because he couldn't even uh he couldn't even order enough in that Burger King because every time he kept coming out to Los Angeles or to New York or Chicago or any place like Texas they would always like Eminem 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 and you could see that look on Eminem's face. I mean I mean some celebrities when you meet them they are generally nice people. Then you have some that when they become rich and famous, they become arrogant, they become conceited, they think they're better than everyone, they look down on you if you're middle class or low class, less than nothing, subhuman. You have them type of celebrities. The ones that be the most rich, most famous, most successful, 
be the most meanest, the most nastiest, and most arrogant person on the planet Earth. And you would be fooled because when you watch their movies and their television shows, you be thinking there's a nice, genuine person. And then when you meet them in person, they're nothing like their movies or television counterpart. They're as evil or cold and disheartened as you possibly could imagine. And it kills your experiences because you can't believe that they're like that. The fame and the fortune, the popularity, it gets to them. And then they feel like that they're a star. They don't want to be surrounded by average or below average people. They don't want to be surrounded by people who's just getting by or even makes just enough. For, store, for years and years and years, I've heard my teachers in, um, in high school say, you don't want to meet Michael Jordan. I said, why? Because Michael Jordan is not that type of guy that wants to be around people who don't make that much money. And I was kind of like, well, that's just you. And they would look at me with this smile like, don't worry, one day when you get older and you see your favorite celebrities on TV and they don't feel like talking to you, you'll know why I said it. I had some people tell me they didn't like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was like, what's the big deal? He's one of the biggest action heroes of all times. And they looked at me like, man, you just looking at Arnold's movies. You don't know the real Arnold. And it wasn't until people made those terrible commercials about Arnold taking money from California when he became governor. That's a prime example on that's your hero. But then when you find out that your hero uh, does something that you don't like, you become, you become heartbroken. So I'm just giving you prime examples. Now, I don't think Arnold... Well, we knew Arnold took money from California, but... I kind of knew that Arnold was going to take money from California, but Arnold's purpose was to try to say, I, I, I can take the money and make more money. And I don't think anybody understood at the time what he was trying to accomplish. All they could think about is he took steroids back in the day. That, that, that's, that's, all, that's all I heard throughout his whole campaign as a governor. You know, he took steroids. He cheated. You know, he ain't the right person. He's a womanizer. And when people told me that, because I was a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, I was like, okay, well, a lot of men are notorious for being a womanizer. You know, Tiger Woods. For almost 10 years, everyone thought Tiger Woods was an angel. You know, they would bash all of my favorite heroes. But whenever I say, well, Tiger Woods ain't perfect, oh, you just mad, man. I don't know why you hating on Tiger Woods. He's the greatest of all times. And all of a sudden, 10, 11 years later, what happens? His wife takes a glove, call, uh, a glove club out, pop him upside the dome, break the glass windshield, and make the SUV crash into a pole or something, and he get knocked out unconscious, bleeding profusely. Because she'd have found out that Tiger Woods had sex with 20 women and lied to her and was doing it for 10 years that they were married together with three kids. And guess what? Everybody was a huge fan of Tiger Woods when he done that. And then to make matters worse, when people ask Tiger Woods, do you consider yourself black or mixed? The minute he say, I consider myself mixed, you should see the angry look on people's face when he said it. All of a sudden, nobody's buying his merchandise. Nobody wants to watch his golf games no more. Nobody wants to watch him on TV. Don't watch his commercials. That's what happens. When um, you put your energy and faith into a hero and then you find out he's not perfect. Even with me, I have the YouTube channel. I am popular and there's a lot of people that like my content. There's people that hate and despise my content. Some understand the purpose of me making this content. Some may understand my content, but will still question it. And I'm okay. I'm okay if you like my content or if you hate my content. But take me for an example. Let's say you meet me on the basketball court. Sometimes when I play basketball, I'm very aggressive and very competitive on the basketball court. Sometimes I'll win basketball games or lose basketball games and give you a high five or a thumbs up. Sometimes I might take 
winning and losing too serious. And you might go, man, I can't hang out with this dude. This dude, this dude lost one basketball game and he get mad. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I'm going to do that at 33, but I'm just trying to give you an example. Or if I make a video saying all the women that I meet are thoughts, and then two years later or four or five years later you see me with a thought and you be like this man made a youtube video saying women are thoughts and i see him trying to get with one i'm just giving you an example now if you see the real alexander at the grove 99.99 percent you're seeing the real alexander at the grove if you see me at 24 Hour Fitness, or if you see me at Planet Fitness, 99.99%, it's the real Alexander. You're going to get the good and the bad. You're not going to get no fake persona. You're not going to get no BS. You're going to get the real Alexander, good and bad. More good than bad. If somebody asked me, um, Alex, was that you that got rejected by that by that hot, cute girl at the Grove area? I'm going to say, yes, I got rejected three times by that hot, attractive girl. I'm not going to say, oh, that wasn't me, man. That's somebody else. No, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to BS. I'm going to tell you the truth. I got rejected three times by this one girl in the Grove area. It happened. It took place. I learned my lesson. I moved on. If you see me go to Bar Sinister in Hollywood, hold on. Sorry about that, that's the fire truck and the paramedics. I can't do nothing about the fire truck or the paramedics. Like I was saying. Now, what I'm trying to explain to you in the video is that if you see me at 24 Hour Fitness, 99.999%, it's the real Alexander at 24 Hour Fitness. If you see me at Planet Fitness, 99.99%, it's the real Alexander. If you see me do boxing or mixed martial arts, chances is it's the real Alexander. If you see me at Venice Beach, Chances is, it's the real Alexander. If you see me go to Bar Sinister in Hollywood, and you see me checking out golf girls or emo punk girls, chances is, it's probably the real Alexander. If you see me go to Comic Con in San Diego, chances is, it's probably the real Alexander. If you see me buying new clothes and new shoes, or getting a fresh haircut, 99.99% is probably the real Alexander. If you see me talking to former co-workers at the Grove, it's because I used to work at the Grove for one year and six months, chances is it's probably the real Alexander. There are people who watch these YouTube videos, and then maybe a week later or two weeks later or five months later, they see me in the Santa Monica area or they see me in Hollywood or in the Grove and they'd be like, that can't be Alexander from the YouTube videos. Chances is you probably saw me in person maybe four or five times and you wasn't uh, you wasn't 100 percent sure. It's probably was me. Either I'm buying some clothes, some shoes, getting a haircut, paying the cell phone bill, probably going to the gym to work out. Chances is you probably seen me four or five times and you probably didn't know it was me. You probably went, oh, he looks bigger on camera. That can't be him. And then you see me a person again. You'd be like, it is him. I'm just trying to tell you, never follow in the footsteps of your heroes. They will disappoint you. I don't care if it's a basketball player, a football player, a baseball player. I don't care if it's a bodybuilder, a weightlifter, a personal trainer. I don't care if it's an actor in television and film. You got some film directors in Hollywood that are not perfect. You know, you hear some stuff 10, 15, 20 years later come out and you be horrified. You got some basketball coaches some football coaches that people inspire to be. And then you find out these guys cheat on their wife, they cheat on their girlfriend. You know, there are stories of actors in Hollywood and television and film where you say, I'm your biggest fan, 
and your idol be hitting on your wife or be hitting on your girlfriend and then you come back from lunch or from dinner and next you know you see this dude trying to mack to your wife or your girlfriend and you'd be like he's probably in character He's probably just acting out a character for a movie or a TV show. You're not thinking that these actors going to be trying to uh, get with your wife or your girlfriend. Same thing with your favorite basketball player or football player or baseball player. You be thinking he's just being nice. He's just flirting. He probably do that with all the girls. You just because it's your idol. And you're not realizing he trying to get with your girlfriend. He trying to mack to your woman. And in some cases... The fights break out. It ain't between an athlete and another athlete. A lot of times it'd be an athlete and a guy who just took a picture with his favorite athlete. And then six months later he go on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And he find out the dude was macking to his wife or girlfriend. And if the woman is a thought. Not all but some. And, the, and if the woman is a thought. She won't mind if it's a basketball player or a football player. She won't mind if it's the bodybuilder or, or the weightlifter or the personal trainer. And you'd be like, how could she be, how could she just uh, 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 allow this? Because some people can easily be influenced by fame and fortune. They see that fame, they see that fortune, they go, why not? It'll fix all my problems financially, why not? And then all that hard work that you put into the relationship or the marriage, it gets flushed down the toilet. That friendship flushed down the toilet. Doesn't mean anything once fame and fortune gets thrown into the mix. I'm just making the video because I said I was going to make the video. I didn't know how I was going to make the video. So, uh, yeah, don't always be such in a rush to fall into the footsteps of your heroes. You'd be surprised that a lot of the fa a lot of your favorite actors in television and film, a lot of them have morals, but a lot of them compromise those morals. And if they not getting them, they if they ain't getting no uh, pie, no homemade apple pie. I'm trying to keep this video as PG as possible. Don't be surprised if that dude mack to your wife or your girlfriend. You know, it ain't gonna matter if you if there was something special or great between you two. Like, when people ask me, because I'm a YouTuber, would you ever do any of that nonsense? I'm like this. I don't get between a guy and the girl. What I do is, if the relationship fall apart, usually I'll just try to stay out of the madness. And, you know, and if the girl pursue me after she break up with her boyfriend, I'm, I feel more comfortable with that. Versus, I'm going to break out two up because I'm thirsty. And I already made a video about the consequences of what happens when you're thirsty. So, I'm just trying to tell you in the video that you can't trust your heroes. I don't care if it's sports. I don't care if it's television and film. I don't care if it's music. Even in the business world, who your favorite hero is, they may disappoint you. Remember in the 1990s when Charles Barkley made that commercial that was too controversial, I'm not your role model? He was trying to tell you then. Don't follow in my footsteps. I ain't perfect. You had a football player that used to play for the Oakland Raiders in the 1990s tell you, don't drink, don't do drugs, don't mess with prostitutes. He was talking about himself. And a lot of people did not catch the warning message that he was trying to tell people. Well, I'm kind of like that. If you see me go to Bar Sinister... In Hollywood, trying to talk to golf girls or emo punk chicks, you're seeing the real Alexander. I'm going to tell the truth, raw and uncut. And you might like the truth, you might not like the truth. You know, other YouTubers, they lie to you and they say, I will never do that. And then you see them with a thought and then you complain because they messing with a thought. Have I been approached by thoughts? Yes, I have. Have I been tempted to mess with the thoughts? Yes, I've been tempted, you know, maybe two or three occasions I've been uh, a bit tempted. Have I act out on some of those emotions? No. But will it happen again in the future? I'm pretty sure somewhere in the near future you might see me talk to a thought and you might go, I hope I hope that brother don't I hope that brother don't do what I think he gonna do. 
And then you might see me do it and go, oh, no, nah, man, I can't trust Alexander no more, man. Uh, I'm going to unsubscribe from his channel because he messing with them thoughts, man. I tell the truth. Other YouTubers, they just tell you whatever because they don't want to lose their views and their subscribers. They don't want to lose their fan base. I've had people subscribe. I had people unsubscribe. I had people watch my videos. I had people unwatch my videos. I'm just making the video to tell you don't always be in a rush to follow in the footsteps of your heroes. Until then, peace.